So first question about your script here, what would you say was the break story moment, the idea that came to you that made you think we have something special here and it's time to move on it? Um, So it's an idea that I've had for kind of a while. Um, It's based on my older brother who is a Jeopardy whiz and all growing up, it was extremely frustrating to try to play Jeopardy alongside of him and just be destroyed. Um, (laughs) But he's... So smart, and he it's been his dream to get on Jeopardy. He's auditioned so many times, and he always makes it into the contestant pool that never gets the call to go on the show. And when I first moved to L.A., I was working as an assistant on a Sony TV show, and so I would have to drive onto the Sony lot all the time, and I would drive past the Jeopardy stage, and I was just like, it's right there. If I could just get my brother onto Jeopardy... <laughs> It would make his whole life. Um, So that was the initial idea. And then I just kept circling back to it, just being like, I feel like that's such a fun jumping off point for a story about, you know, two estranged siblings coming back together. Has he still not been on Jeopardy? No. Can you believe that? I'm like, I don't even know him and I'm already very invested in this. How do I campaign to get him on Jeopardy? I really am just like, if this movie winds up just being like the, the way to get him on Jeopardy, I mean, nothing will make me happier. I mean, I'm here to do whatever I can to make that happen. (laughs) So you've had you've had this idea for a good while now. What would you say is the biggest difference between draft one of the screenplay and now what everyone's going to see in the final film? Um, Oh, my gosh. Great question. I think um, the characters really just have evolved so much. Once we got Aquafina and Sandra Oh on board, it was so fun to really craft these characters with them. They had so many great ideas and they just were so excited to really throw themselves into this. And um, my very pretentious uh, metaphor for writing characters is that it's like uh, sculpting a statue where it's like the writer just on their own just kind of like makes the rough shape and then the actor and the director come in and you sort of like do all the fine detail work together. And it's so fun to just sort of uncover this character as it comes to life. And so I think just the central two characters are the things that change the most because they really they wouldn't be who they are if it weren't for Aquafina and Sandra. All right. One of uh, one of my follow-up questions to that is one of my absolute favorites because I love talking about how things can evolve through every single step of the filmmaking process. So is there anything in the final film that you wound up loving more than you ever expected, where someone who's involved in the making of Quiz Lady did something with it that, I don't know, I guess maybe made you realize that something in your own script was even stronger than you ever thought it was? I mean, the there were so many moments I really, just like nothing delights me more than um, when you really get a sense of how many people work on a movie and how excited they are and their individual skill sets and what they bring to it. And one of the moments that I think about a lot is when uh, we were shooting the audition scenes in the hotel and Jeff Mann, the production designer, was just like, hey, come take a look at this. And he showed me that they had printed up signs for um, an egg donation, like <laughs> just charity, I think. It's just like, it's that's the conference that's going on. It's like about egg donation. And that's just based on one throwaway joke from later on in the script. But he was just like, I thought it would be funny to put this sign back here. It's the type of thing that no one will ever notice. Like maybe on your third watch, you'll notice this sign in the background. But stuff like that, I just love so much because it's just the movie, you know, every aspect of this movie just delights me to no end um, because it really just represents so much love and hard work from hundreds of people. And they did such a great job. I will preface this question by saying it is very, very unfair. And every single person who worked on this movie matters. But can you maybe name one person that, you know, they're not the star of the movie, they're not the writer, producer or a director, but someone that we need to know their name because of how how heavily they contributed to making this something special. Oh my gosh. I mean, Casey Goodell was our first AD and she was incredible. That is the hardest job, I think, on set. Um, ADs always deserve more credit. They really always do. Unsung heroes. <laughs> yeah, we would be nowhere without them. We would be behind. We would still be on set. We would never wrap. Um, but yeah, that job is extremely difficult and it's also very difficult to do um you know, without people just like really hating you because you have to be such a taskmaster. But Casey was so incredible and she really, you know, contributed to 
so much to that set running so well and just making it so that everyone was able to do their jobs really well. So she was the unsung hero for sure. I love hearing about a good AD. Yeah. All right. Here's a part of the process that I am always eager to shine a light on, but especially after coming out of the recent writer strike, what does it mean to you to be both a writer and producer on a project? And maybe also what value do you think it brings to a project when a writer's work does not stop with just writing the script, but they are involved throughout a production? Totally. Um, I love the that question. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, it was huge. I mean, I I was so grateful that I really got to be involved through every step of the way. Like I was on set in New Orleans. I lived there for the whole time and uh, got to be, you know, on set every day. I was really involved with post. um, And it's such a gift because I think, you know, it's so hard to kind of define what screenwriting is because it's not just typing. <laughs> it's it's everything. It's storytelling. And that happens, you know, throughout the entire process. Like you, you know, editing a movie is just writing a movie visually again. So, you know, there's so much stuff that you can uncover. And I think, you know, writers can also be a big asset on set. You know, there are times where it's just like, something goes wrong, you know, like, oh, there's something wrong with this location or like, oh, the crane broke. And so we can't do this thing now. Um, And if you have the writer there, you know, they can help in the solution because it's like, okay, we might not be able to accomplish this exactly as we saw it, but the story intent could be accomplished this way instead. So you might actually wind up saving time and money by not just sort of being stuck to the script. Like there's ways to sort of accomplish what you need to accomplish by rewriting it as you're going. Um, And so that was so incredible to be able to be a part of it and be a part of, you know, solving the problems that come up and finding creative solutions for, you know, all of the many snags that movies will naturally run into. (laughs) So, so true. Something I will always continue to highlight. All right, I'm going to follow up that serious question with some sillier, lighter stuff. First, I am obsessed with dogs, so I need to know (laughs) everything about Mr. Linguini First, was Mr. Linguini always scripted to be a pug? Yes. So Mr. Linguini, I'm also obsessed with dogs, as you probably could assume. Um, Mr. Linguini is based on my very good friends. Uh, They have a pug named Aggie. Um, It's short for Agador Spartacus. They named her after Hank Azaria's character from The Birdcage. Um, And... (laughs) Aggie, she's now 11. She's a grand old dame. Uh, But I love her so much. And she just always makes me laugh because just the sound of a pug snoring, there's nothing funnier, more disruptive, or more soothing. Like, it's it's all three. Um, And so she just really made me laugh. And then, yeah, in thinking of Anne as this character who's really turned inward and, like, shut herself off from the world... Um, I thought that a pug is just the perfect companion for her because in many ways I think of Anne as someone who was raised by TV. So she has the personality of Terry McTeer. So like she was a six-year-old girl with the personality of a 40-year-old man. (laughs) And I feel like that's what a pug is. Like they're these adorable little puppies, but they're so just old and and (laughs) world-weary. There's nothing more relatable than a young adult raised by TV who also like fills a hole in her heart with with a dog. Yeah. I mean, that's literally me. So (laughs) I know I share that, too. Wait, In in that case, who who is uh, who's your dog? What's your dog named after? Um, So my dog is named Wally. His full name is Walnut. Um, (laughs) I have a Wally. Really? I swear, named after Wally from Pixar's movie. We were also like, we want to name him Walnut. We'll call him Wally. It's sort of after Wally because <laughs> um, we love that movie. What kind of well, dog is he? Wally is a mini dachshund, a white mini dachshund. So very unusual looking. And yeah. he is a sweetheart. Wait, what What type of dog is your Wally? We think he's like a multi-poo. Um, okay. When we got him, they were like, we think he'll be 40 pounds. And we were like, great, perfect. And then he tapped out at 12. And we were just like, oh, great. We have this little fluff. But we love him so much. He, uh, my husband and I frequently refer to him as our boss. Um, he really that makes all runs the sense home. in the world to me. Yeah. <laughs> all of our pets should always run our lives. That is how yes. I operate, at least. Um, <laughs> some silly game show questions for you now. Oh. 
what game show do you think you would be best at? But then I also want the opposite, the the reality TV show competition show that you would never, ever want to be on because you would stink at it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I I love Survivor and it's my dream to go on Survivor, but I would never do it um, because, I mean, I think it would drive me insane. But also, I'm not a very strong swimmer and I live in fear of being like, on some fail compilation video of like me belly flopping into the ocean. So I would never go on Survivor, even though I want to. Um, And I feel like I really want to go on Jeopardy. I feel like I could be good at it, but I'm also so scared that I would choke and look stupid. Um, But I do love trivia so much. So I kind of feel like I could be okay, but I don't know. And I'll never know because my brother has to get on and then (laughs) that'll be enough. (laughs) I feel like I would be good at Jeopardy like one out of every five days of the week. Exactly. That's how I feel. I'm like, it would be so dependent on if I could do well or if I would just be so catastrophically. I would be the Mary Beth Wendelmore. I would just completely freeze (laughs) and get scared. I might be that as well. All right. I have to wind down with you. So the inevitable is going to happen. I have to squeeze in a couple of Hocus Pocus 3 questions because I love Halloween. I love that movie. And now that franchise. First, a safe question for you, or at least what I think is a safe question. It is obviously hugely exciting to get to continue on with a franchise. And saying yes to writing another script had to be a no-brainer. But what about for you as a writer evolving your craft? Is there anything about Hocus Pocus 3 that makes you think this is the next best step for me in order to, you know, add more skills to my toolkit. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's such an interesting challenge. I mean, I think with Hocus Pocus 2, you know, you had the challenge of revisiting these beloved characters and, you know, wanting to really make it, um, worthwhile, this sequel. And, um, I feel like, you know, we had so much fun making it. It turned out so well. I'm so, I'm so thrilled and honored and humbled by the response that it got. And so it's so exciting to be able to go do a third one. But it is, you know, it's its own new challenge of kind of like, well, now we have different expectations going into this. And people, you know, that fan base is so devoted as as am I. I am just as much a fan as everybody else. So I'm like, yes, I have my own theories about what we could see and what things mean and where we could take these characters. So uh, It's interesting to be like, okay, now we have even more possibility and it'll be a challenge to sort of pick the avenue and really make the movie stand on its own. I have a feeling you'll crush that challenge. I love the second one quite a bit. And that's coming from like my version of Terry is the Sanderson sisters. Like they taught me how to be a person growing up. (laughs) Yes. I watch it every (laughs) Halloween. Like I loved it so much. It was so it's it's a part of me. It's a part of my DNA. Focus, focus, nightmare before Christmas and trick or treat. Essential. Essential. All right. Now I'm going to squeeze in a question that I feel like you're not going to be able to answer, but I'm at least going to try. So assuming we have not seen the last of the Sanderson sisters, do you think that Winifred can still be like like devilish, devilishly delightful, but also still reflect the fact that she actually learned something at the end of the second movie? Oh, totally. Because I think, you know, with the Sanderson sisters, the thing that makes them so fun is that they really are like herding cats. So I'm like, yes, Winifred learned a very valuable lesson. She loves her sisters more than anything in the world, but she will also just immediately get distracted by whatever's put in front of her. So if you dangle the carrot of a potential revenge against Salem, which she has always wanted, you know, she might uh, have a backslide where she, uh, you know, Get singularly focused on the wrong goal again. Um, I I think that's totally possible. (laughs) Yeah. I look forward to hearing more about that. And until then, I am happy to watch and rewatch Quiz Lady over and over and over again. (laughs) Seriously, delightful movie. Huge congratulations to you. Thank you so much. 